So, we know Dragon Communion builds are super strong in Shadow of the Earth Tree, but let's not forget about the other Dragon build, Dragon Cult. Dragon Cult builds have also gotten some new toys to play with, which has made them immensely stronger as well. One of the most important new things is going to be the Priestess Heart. And this works exactly like the Rock Heart for Dragon Communion builds, but it gives you a different looking dragon form and buffs Dragon Cult by 20% instead. So just like that, you're capable of doing an entire 20% extra damage with your current Dragon Cult build. And then easily, the most important new thing is going to be Knight's Lightning Spear. This is basically an upgraded, much stronger version of the regular Lightning Spear. It deals an immense amount of damage, capable of one-shotting even a lot of elite enemies in the open world, and it's going to be by far your most used incantation. There are two other new Dragon Cult incantations as well, an aura buff called Dragon Bolt of Florisax, and a body buff called Electro Charge, but those are both completely and utterly useless, so we can forget that they even exist. Now, let's take a look at the build. Keep in mind, I'm on New Game Plus 2, so I am at a higher level, but I'll show you the best way to do the build at level 150 as well. Starting with my stats, I'm using the exact same stats that I use on my Dragon Communion build, 60 Vigor, 57 Mind, 20 Endurance, 14 Strength, and 10 Dexterity for weapon requirements, 99 Arcane, and also 46 Faith. 46 Faith is needed to cast all of the Dragon Cult incantations that we'll be using. Dragon Cult builds aren't as FP hungry as Dragon Communion, so you could take out some points from Mind and move them to Faith. Now, the reason I'm using an Arcane and Faith build instead of pure Faith is because the Dragon Communion seal has considerably higher incantation scaling than the Gravel Stone seal. So at a certain point, you're going to get more damage out of casting with the Dragon Communion seal while holding the Gravel Stone seal in your other hand than you would by holding two Gravel Stone seals. But on top of that, one of the new things Dragon Cult builds got was a weapon called the Flower Stone Gavel. This is a hammer with a lightning based skill that scales off of Arcane instead of Faith. The skill not only does surprisingly good damage, but it also reduces the enemy's lightning resistance. It can be charged up for a bigger debuff, uncharged is 23%, and charged is a whopping 30%. That is an absolutely massive debuff especially useful against enemies with high lightning resistance, which is one of the build's only weaknesses. And when you factor in the debuff from the Flower Stone Gavel, now you're actually doing more damage with the Faith Arcane setup than going pure Faith with two Gravel Stone Seals, even at lower levels where you can't put so many points into both Arcane and Faith yet. And my favorite thing about going Faith Arcane instead of pure Faith is, we can switch between Dragon Cult and Dragon Communion builds at will on the exact same stats. You just need to switch around your Talismans, your Second Hand Seal, and the Wanderer's Physic, as well as switch from the Priestess Heart to the Rock Heart, but you wouldn't need to respect your stats at all to switch builds. So if you like both Dragon Cult and Dragon Communion builds, this is very convenient. Now for a level 150 build, I would pick the Prophet as your starting class, and use a stat spread of 60 Vigor, 38 Mind, 14 Strength, 46 Faith, and 45 Arcane. This will get you to all the most important soft caps. Moving on with the build, for the Talismans, Godfrey Icon is needed because Dragon Cult incantations can and should almost always be charged, so this is an easy extra 15% damage. Lightning Scorpion Charm is 12.5% more lightning damage, and all of our damage is lightning, although keep in mind this does make you more of a glass cannon than you already are. Flux Talisman is for an unconditional 8% damage increase. And in the fourth slot, since we aren't using armor and are using a scorpion charm, it's important to use a defensive talisman in the last slot, such as the Dragon Crest Great Shield, or whatever damage negation talisman is best for the boss you're fighting. And then with the Wanderer's Physic, you want the blood sucking tier and the lightning tier for maximum damage. Using these two tiers together c creates a 44% damage increase from your wondrous physic. So with these talismans, the physic, the priestess art, and the incantation buffs we're going to be using, you can get up to nearly a 4 times multiplier to all your dragon cult incantations, allowing for immense damage. And that's before accounting for the flower stone gavel's debuff. Now let's talk about the incantations. 
Blessing of the Archery is very important to counterbalance the HP drain from the blood sucking tier. Golden Vow goes without saying, it's more damage and more damage negation. Howl of Shibiri provides a 25% increase to all your damage, so we want to use that instead of Flame Grant Me Strength as that one doesn't work on lightning damage. However, Howl will make you a lot squishier, so we are already squishy on this build, so if you are having survival issues, replace this with a damage negation buff like Black Flame Protect Me, or whatever matches the damage type of the boss you're fighting. Knight's Lightning Spear, as mentioned, is going to be our bread and butter, used like 80% of the time. The damage it deals from the range it can hit from really makes it hard to justify using the other incantations most of the time. When you aren't using Knight's Lightning Spear, you'll likely be using Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. This incantation can do absurd amounts of damage if most or all of the lightning bolts hit, but a lot of them will miss if the enemy doesn't have a huge hitbox. The incantation does take a long time to charge while not having hyper armor, so you're pretty much only going to use this on massive enemies with long punish windows, such as dragons and avatars, but against such enemies it is absurdly powerful. Lanciax Glaive doesn't do a ton of damage compared to the others, but it is a sweeping AoE in front of you and it knocks down humanoid enemies, so it's good to have for AoE and human enemies especially gank fights against human enemies, like Fia, Simps, and the gank fight you have to do before the final boss. You also have a decent amount of hyper armor while doing it. Vortisac's Lightning Spear is capable of doing a ton of damage, but it's hard to justify ever using it. You basically have to be hugging the enemy for it to fully hit and do a meaningful amount of damage. The animation time is very long, so you're more than likely going to take a ton of damage or even just straight up die trying to use it. While it does have decent hyper armor, you can still get staggered out of it by some things, so the hyper armor just isn't enough for what it is. But it is a very cool incantation, so I like to keep it in the arsenal just in case I can find an opening to use it. But again, every time I do try to use it, I get punished pretty hard and would have had a much better time just chucking the knight's lightning spears. Then we also keep the regular Lightning Spear. It does a lot less damage than Knight's Lightning Spear, but it costs less FP, it has a bit further range, so it's nice to use against low HP enemies to conserve FP. Although, once you get a high amount of mind, the FP isn't a concern, so you don't have to include Lightning Spear if you want to save a memory slot. Then the rest of your memory slots aren't super important. You can just not include anything so that you can sort through the incantations faster. Or you can keep extra utility incantations on you, such as Flame Cleanse Me and the Damage Negation Body Buffs, so you always have them on you for when you will need them. Or you could include some Dragon Communion incantations, since we do have the stats for them. They won't be doing as much damage as they would on a dedicated Dragon Communion build, but they can still add good value. If you do include them, the ones I'd suggest the most are Grail's Roar for its debuff and 360 degree AoE or Bell's Flame Lightning for its high damage and hyper armor. Now that we know the build, how strong is it? This is an extremely powerful build, capable of doing mind-boggling amounts of damage from range. The main weakness is that it's a complete glass cannon due to no armor, Scorpion Charm, and Howl of Shibiri, so you will get killed in like two hits by most bosses. And the build also doesn't have much hyper armor to work with. The fragility of the build can be worked around to an extent though. Instead of using the Priestess Heart, there is a new armor set called the Death Knight set that boosts all Dragon Cult damage by 2% per part piece. So if using the full set, you'll be doing 12% less damage than you would with the Priestess Heart, but your damage negations will be a lot higher since you'll have armor. So, so that's not a bad trade off by any means. And as mentioned, if need be, you can use a defensive body buff instead of Hal of Shibiri, although this will be a large 25% drop in damage, so you do really want to use Hal if you can get away with it. But overall, this is indeed an extremely strong build, and I hope you enjoy it. If you find today's video helpful at all, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and comment your thoughts below.